ह्यूमन ब्लड सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम स्टडी किया था फिर लास्ट वीडियो में हम लोगों ने ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इन प्लांट्स देखा जिसमें आप लोगों ने ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ वाटर एंड मिनरल्स थ्रू जायलम स्टडी किया था इस वीडियो में हम लोग ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ फूड इन प्लांट्स थ्रू फ्लोएम स्टडी करेंगे स्टूडेंट्स यू नो दैट फ्लोएम एंड जायलम दीज आर द कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लांट टिश्यूज दे आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड वेस्कुलर टिश्यूज बिकॉज दे कंटेन ट्यूब्स थ्रू विच वाटर एंड अदर सब्सटांसिस कैन पास थ्रू फ्रॉम वन पार्ट ऑफ द प्लांट बॉडी टू एन अदर पार्ट ओके सो इट इज दिस फ्लोएम विच ट्रांसपोर्ट्स फूड फ्रॉम लीव्स टू अदर पार्ट्स ऑफ द प्लांट बॉडी ओके तो इससे पहले कि हम फ्लोएम के मैकेनिज्म को स्टडी करें पहले उसके स्ट्रक्चर को रिवाइज करते हैं जो आप लोगों ने क्लास नाइन्थ में पढ़ा है सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट अस स्टार्ट स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ फ्लोएम फ्लोएम कंसिस्ट ऑफ सीव ट्यूब्स लुक एट द वर्ड स्टूडेंट्स सीव ट्यूब्स दीज आर द कंडक्टिंग एलिमेंट्स ऑफ फ्लोएम स्टूडेंट्स यू हैव स्टडीड दैट इन जायलम ट्रिकीट्स एंड वेसल्स आर द कंडक्टिंग टिश्यूज एंड दे आर डेड सेल्स बट इन दिस केस इस केस में सीव ट्यूब्स आर द कंडक्टिंग टिश्यूज एंड दीज आर द लिविंग सेल्स दिस इज वन डिफरेंस कि जायलम में ट्रिकीड्स और वेसल्स डेड सेल्स होते हैं जबकि फ्लोएम में सीव ट्यूब्स ये लिविंग सेल्स होते हैं सो फ्लोएम कंसिस्ट ऑफ सीव ट्यूब्स कनेक्टेड एंड टू एंड मीन्स वन सीव ट्यूब इज कनेक्टेड विथ एनदर एंड विच इज कनेक्टेड विथ स्टिल एनदर इन दिस वे फॉर्मिंग अ कंटिन्यूस लॉन्ग पैसेज फॉर कंडक्शन ऑफ शुगर दैट इज सुक्रोज dissolved in water so students do remember that anything which is dissolved in water would be conducted solid food won't be conducted okay so each sieve tube cell is connected with the next cell through a sieve plate look at the words students sieve plate ek sieve tube cell apne agle sieve tube cell se एक स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ पार्टीशन से कनेक्टेड होता है नॉर्मली इस टाइप का पार्टीशन प्लांट सेल्स में नहीं होता लेकिन यहाँ पर एक सीव ट्यूब सेल अगले सीव ट्यूब सेल से एक सीव प्लेट के थ्रू कनेक्टेड होता है जिसमें छोटे छोटे पोर्स होते हैं और इन पोर्स के थ्रू इस सीव ट्यूब सेल का साइटोप्लाज्म अगले सीव ट्यूब सेल के साइटोप्लाज्म से कनेक्टेड होगा तो इस प्रकार वाटर और डिजॉल्व मटीरियल्स इस यूट्यूब सेल से पास होकर के अगले यूट्यूब सेल में एंटर कर सकते हैं ओके सो दिस इज़ अ स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ पार्टीशन कॉल्ड सीव प्लेट हैविंग पोर्स थ्रू विच वन यूट्यूब सेल इज कनेक्टेड विथ एनदर सी यूट्यूब सेल ओके सो ईच सीव ट्यूब सेल इज कनेक्टेड विद द नेक्स्ट सेल थ्रू अ सीव प्लेट हैविंग पोर्स टू अलाउ पैसेज ऑफ सैप दैट इज वॉटर With dissolved sucrose and other materials, each sieve tube is also connected with a companion cell, as you have studied in class नाइन्थ Do remember that हर एक sieve tube cell के साथ एक companion cell होगा इस sieve tube cell के साथ ये companion cell है Okay, this is the companion cell. So this companion cell it not only controls the functioning of the sieve tube cell but it also helps the sieve tube cell in conduction of materials okay so each sieve tube is connected with a companion cell that also helps the sieve tube cell in conduction to so students see hum logo ne briefly phloem ke structure ko padha isme jo conducting elements hote hain wo hain sieve tube cells okay Now, students, let us see the mechanism how the food is conducted. How does phloem transport food materials? Okay. So, students, let us see how transport of food takes place through the phloem. Okay. Let us try to understand this mechanism through this diagram. So, as you can see, this is a normal leaf cell. it produces sugars by the process of photosynthesis and hence it acts as a source of food 
Now this leaf cell is in contact with the companion cell of the phloem and this companion cell is in continuation with the sieve tube cell okay so sugars produced in the leaf cell are transferred into the companion cell and then into the sieve tube cells this transfer of sugars from leaf cells to companion cells and then into the sieve tube cells is an active process which means that the leaf cells have to use energy to transport sugars into the sieve tube cells okay so this is an active process it is an energy dependent process the leaf cells have to use energy to transfer sugars into the sieve tube cells okay now this sieve tube cell is in contact with the next sieve tube cell it is in continuation with the next sieve tube cell through the sieve plate and as you know it students this sieve plate it has small pores through which cytoplasm of this sieve tube cell is in continuation with the cytoplasm of this sieve tube cell okay so anything in the solution form can flow from this sieve tube to the next sieve tube okay and again this sieve tube is in continuation with this sieve tube okay so as a whole water along with the dissolved food can flow from one end to another end of the plant body through the sieve tubes which are interconnected now here this sieve tube cell is in contact with its companion cell and this companion cell is in contact with the root cell this root cell it acts as the storage and hence it is also called sink so basically what is happening in in the transport of uh, food is that the leaf cells acting as the source of uh, food actively supply sugars into the sieve tube cells okay now when sugars are supplied into the sieve tube cells a hypertonic medium is created here students you know hypertonic medium when hypertonic medium is created into the sieve tube cells they tend to take up water and as xylem is running parallel to the phloem water flows from xylem into the sieve tube cells by osmosis okay because a hypertonic medium has been created here by the supply of sugars here okay so first sugars are supplied a hypertonic medium is created here and as a result water moves in by osmosis from adjacent xylem into the sieve tube cells this creates an increase of pressure in the sieve tube cells and due to that increased pressure water along with the dissolved sugars moves from one sieve tube cell to next and to next okay till it reaches the storage organs and here the reverse takes place the sugars are removed here the sugars are supplied into the sieve tube cells to create a hypertonic medium whereas here the reverse takes place the sugars are removed by the companion cells and these sugars are supplied into the root cells so as a result here when the sugars are removed the medium becomes hypotonic okay here the medium is hypertonic whereas here the medium is in this sieve tube cell it is hypotonic so as a result this sieve tube cell it will it would lose water and water would pass out from the sieve tube cell into the xylem and this water along with the upward mo moving water it would move upwards towards the leaf okay so this is how it takes place again i am explaining try to understand it clearly let us start from the beginning these leaf cells they produce sugars that is sucrose by the process of photosynthesis the glucose that is produced is converted into sucrose and this sucrose is transferred from leaf cells through the companion cells into the sieve tube cells 
and this is an active transport that is the leaf cells have to use energy they have to use energy for transfer of sugars okay so a hypertonic medium is created here and as a result water moves in by osmosis here from the adjacent xylem this creates creates an increase in pressure in the co tube cells and water along with the dissolved food moves through the co tube cells till it reaches the sink that is the storage organs and here the sugars are removed they are actively removed rather by the companion cells and supplied into the root cells so here the medium in the co tube cells becomes hypotonic okay and as a result water moves out by osmosis this is ex osmosis movement of water out from the cell is called ex ex osmosis here it it is end osmosis because here the medium that is created by supply of sugars is hypertonic whereas here the medium is hypotonic okay so here this co tube cell would lose water and this water would pass back into the xylem and along with the upward moving stream of water it would move upwards towards the leaf so this is how transport transport of uh, food takes place through the phloem so let us try to read it transport of food that is sugars through phloem is explained by the pressure flow hypothesis now you can understand why it is called pressure flow because hypertonic medium is created here as a result water moves in through osmosis from the adjacent xylem and as a result a high pressure is created here and due to high pressure the water along with the dissolved food it moves through the sieve tubes and hence it is called pressure flow hypothesis hypothesis means it is a theory it is an explanation of the process or it is also called mass flow hypothesis why it is it called mass flow hypothesis this word mass it shows that the water entire water along with the dissolved food it flows in mass means the entire water along with the dissolved material it flows just like water flows through the pipes the water along with the dissolved food it flows from one sieve tube cell to next to next in this way a continuous channel is formed okay so entire water along with the dissolved materials flows from the sieve tube cells hence it is also called mass flow hypothesis according to which let us try to read it once again glucose produced in the leaves through photosynthesis is converted to sugar that is sucrose this is the first point this sucrose is supplied into the companion cells here by the leaf cells the sucrose is con uh, supplied into the companion cells and then into the living phloem sieve tube cells by active transport okay this produces a hypertonic condition in the sieve tube cells of the phloem a hypertonic condition is created here in the sieve tube cells at the leaf end okay water in the adjacent xylem because hypertonic condition is created in the sieve tube cells so water in the adjacent xylem moves into the phloem by osmosis okay due to this pressure inside the phloem increases and water along with dissolved sucrose moves through the sieve tube cells towards the root that is sink okay here sucrose is removed from the sieve tube cells and stored or used up in the root cells so here at the root end sucrose is removed actively by the companion cells and supplied into the root cells where it is either used up or stored okay so root cells act as the sink now as a result sap inside the sieve tube cells becomes hypotonic the medium inside the sieve tube cells at the root end becomes hypotonic okay here it is hypertonic whereas it here at the 
other end it is hypotonic okay and so water moves out from the sieve tubes into the adjacent cells and into the xylem water moves out from the sieve tube cells into the adjacent cells and into the xylem by exosmosis and this water is pulled up through the xylem completing the cycle so students just now you saw how food is translocated or transported from leaves which act as the source to the sink through the sieve tube cells of the phloem okay now students conduction of food through phloem is bidirectional what i mean to say is that in phloem food flows from leaves to the roots okay so it flows from source to the sink so roots act as the sink they act as storage organs for food now it may also happen that roots may supply food to the upper parts so now roots would become source and the upper parts would become sink okay so it is bidirectional food may come down to the roots from the leaves and it may also go upwards from storage organs to the place where it is needed so transport of food through the phloem is bidirectional sugars are transported from leaves to roots which act as storage organs this food may again be transported upwards from roots to other parts of the plant body through the phloem especially during the flowering season you know students during the flowering season that is during the spring the energy needs of the plant are very high okay because it has to flower it has to reproduce it has to uh, produce seeds fruits and seeds and all okay so it has to do a lot of activity and hence the energy needs are very high so now in this case the roots would act as the source and food from roots would again be transported upwards through the phloem to the place where they it is needed okay and hence the transport of food through the phloem is bidirectional so flow of water on the other hand and minerals through the xylem is unidirectional this is one big difference between phloem and xylem that in xylem the flow of water and minerals is from roots to the leaves it does not take place the other way around water will not come down from leaves to the roots so flow in xylem transport in xylem is unidirectional whereas transport in phloem is bidirectional it can take place in both directions okay so flow of water and minerals through the xylem is unidirectional that is from roots to the leaves okay students i hope you have understood the mechanism of transport in xylem and phloem through these two videos thank you very much for watching these videos okay thank you very much